you guys. It's Rachel here with Sins of Tempo Cani Corso. Uh, so, not going to do a video today other than just a little update. Um, pardon. Yesterday we had our uh, live stream. And during the live stream, actually at the time that we were being um, bombarded by uh trolls um also had another episode and uh and um the weather was like frozen or whatever like we couldn't go anywhere you know what i mean it was um bad so i couldn't take him to the vet and uh he has an appointment for monday he's over it now so there's really no point um, and going like today. Um, I knew this was a possibility. That's why I kept him back. I know a lot of people questioned that. I think a lot of people thought maybe I had ulterior motives, but, um, you know, I knew that it was a risk. Um, so, um, he could be in basically renal failure, like kidney failure. Um, I won't know that until Monday when I have, um, him checked out by the vet. Um, you know, it's just something that can happen. It's not like... Um, anything like that runs in our breed or anything. It's just sometimes you get the short end of the stick. You know, I think we all know that all of us in our lives can get sick and we can get things and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's in our lines, but, but it can happen. And I, it's hard to even talk about it because a, I really, love him a lot and I'm very bonded to him um, um and and it's just a fine line where like as a breeder being honest is sometimes a scary thing to do um it's much easier to just like Pardon my arm. Um, it's much easier to just not say anything and um, and then nobody knows and it's no big deal. But I I have to be honest. Um, if I thought for a second that it was a risk to my program, I would cut it. My cut my program out. I spoke with a couple breeder. I was literally up to like three a.m. last night talking with people that have been breeding these dogs one of them for over 20 years and he was very adamant to me that I didn't need to to you know reevaluate my program one dog having an issue out of all the times that I've I've bred Cashmere twice she's had 11 puppies each time bred pre bred Preacher four times no issues so it's just one of those things that can happen I, I almost wonder if it's because she she kept them too long. Like, I don't know if you guys remember, but whenever it came to her having her puppies, she um, kept she kept tricking me. She I kept thinking she was in labor and she wasn't. And it makes me think she held on to them. Um, the first time she didn't lose any puppies. The second time we did have a stillborn. So there's just no way to know. But I'll find out tomorrow if Oso is even going to be able to to make it anymore like if we're gonna have to put him down because he's got he's already dying or if he can be managed with medication I have spoken with some people um, that would be able to provide him with like a medical type home like not a pet home we're talking somebody that would know about his condition and and they handle dogs like that but that's just going to depend on if he's actually in renal failure or not. Um, so 
really sad, but that's also why I kept my first pick. People kept asking me, well, are you going to keep your first pick position on your next litter? Well, yes, you know. Um, it's really hard to watch a dog suffer. And, uh, and I... I'm going to have to make the right choice if that's what it ends up being. Hopefully it's not, but unfortunately, I can't pronounce the word of what it is, but it's, it's like hypertismia or whatever it is, but it's basically where the, where your body is unable to maintain appropriate sodium levels and they drop rapidly. And it's something that is... Um, they don't really know what it is, where it comes from, but there's a bunch of different things that it can be from. It could be from liver failure. It could be from kidney failure. It could be from like, um, hyper, hyperthyroidism. Like there's so many things that can cause it that knowing what the thing is, is a big part of the issue. But as long as it's not like immediate organ failure, then hopefully he could be managed with medication um, in a home that is prepared for that. You know what I mean? Like um, people that that are, you know, dedicated to that. Not a home like mine where he's, it's a pack of dogs. You know what I mean? Like he can't get that one-on-one -on -one attention. Like I didn't even know he was even having a problem because I was on my live stream dealing with trolls. And my daughter was over here trying to tell me and I was so distracted that I just kind of told her to just sit, you know, I just didn't see anything going on and I feel really horrible about that. Um, I can't get a break right now. Uh, I think that's just, I don't know, sometimes I guess this stuff just happens. It's not, I've been through hard times in my life before, so it's not like this is anything new. It's just part of life. Things happen. So, um, it's just that right now has been a particularly bad time. I have not gotten out of bed today. Um, just depressed. Um, I've done my crying. Couldn't make this video until I was done. Because <laughs> I don't want to be a big sobbing mess. So, um... I guess I just want to let y'all know, I, like I said, I could have just not said anything, but I just, I don't know. I just believe that when you, when you are not honest, that things can come back and haunt you, you know, like you need to just be honest because you never know what's going to happen and you just should trust that, that things will work out. And I have, I'm trusting that. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I'll go on Monday, tomorrow to find out. And then, and then I'll know. So I just wanted to let y'all know what's going on. As for the live stream, because of the, um, the kids that just have really nothing better to do with with their lives. I don't get that. I don't, I mean, I get it. Like I get the people have hard lives and that they just want to take it out on other people. I guess what I don't get is <sighs> why it's so common. I don't know. It just, I was never like that. I was never one to run away from a fight, especially online, but I mean, I was the one that like kind of bullied the bullies, you know, but, um, but I never just went out and attacked people for no reason. You know what I mean? I just never went out and tried to like hurt people for no reason. People that had never done anything to me, you know, like, um, that's foreign. That's foreign to me as far as, as far as that's concerned. Apparently it's really common. So I don't know what, how I'm going to handle that yet. Um, I've already got a bunch of words blocked, um, but 
um, I may end up, somebody told me to use Twitch. I've never used Twitch. I don't know anything about it. Um, I do have a Patreon and what I may end up doing is just doing the actual live stream on Patreon and, and to ask a question to interact, you would need to be on Patreon. And then I could live stream that live stream but I would have the comments turned off on my YouTube. That way those people can't, um, can't troll it. Cause I can't, I mean, it's just like, I get it edge Lord or whatever. I don't get what is so like risque about racist comments. Like, like, honestly, I don't get it. Like, why do you think that's cool? Like, I get that you're not supposed to feed the trolls. I understand, but I'm just going to say my piece. I really don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to say my piece. And I don't understand why that is in any way, um, why anyone gets a kick out of that. You know what I mean? About, I mean, like I am no stranger to memes. Like I, you know, I'm just not, but <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows that. Um, but I've always had um, or always tried to maintain a certain level of like decency um, with people. Like it's not to say like when you get people that know, like when you get on like car groups and stuff like that, um, what there are, there are, what we call trash talk threads where you can say whatever you want, you know, and there's like an understanding there that you're supposed to be as offensive as possible. But outside of those areas, I just don't get that. You know, I don't understand it. Um, but there's a lot about our world today and, and our and people that I don't understand. So I guess it's nothing new. Um, so we'll figure it out, but, but, um, but that's where we're at. I just wanted to let you guys know, I, I really debated just not even doing a video at all today. And then, and then I was just like, you know what? If I feel like if I don't say anything, like I'm holding like a secret back and I just don't want to, but that's what it feels like. And I know that you guys don't really know me and I don't really know you, but I feel <clears throat> like this is a journey and it's a journey in honesty. And I think that it, that in order for people to understand what it's like to be a breeder and what it's like to do the kinds of things that I have to do, then you have to know what it's like. And for all the people that sit and say, oh, you're just in it for the money and you're just blah, blah, blah. Okay. You know, until you've had to literally bring a puppy into this world and then be the one to have to possibly remove it, you don't know. Most people couldn't even handle that kind of pressure. <sighs> so, while it is very hard for me to talk about, uh, it's part of the process. It is a reality of breeders everywhere. So, now you know. Um, I've got my cat here <laughs> on my lap. Come here. I love her. Uh, so anyway, you guys, I'm not going to cry on here. I'm going to go. Y'all have a good night. But I want to let you know what's going on. Okay.